Blog Talk Radio, the world's largest online radio network. Here we go, week number four of the FantasyGuru.com Sunday night wrap-up podcast. Paul Kelly and FantasyGuru.com publisher John Hanson here to break down all of the action so far. Week number four in the National Football League. John, good to be with you on a Sunday night. And week four, as we like to do at the top of the podcast, give us your broad overview of the week. Um, probably not as good as the first three weeks, but I, I wouldn't say it was a bad week. Once again, as always, there are buzz kills and surprises. But I felt, I'm looking at the scores here, for the most part, a lot of people came through. Denver was a big one. We love Denver's offense this week, obviously. They came through. There were a couple of situations where we felt that a team would get completely shut out, like the Jets did, and mm. basically the Rams did, if you take away that fake kick and touchdown to Danny Amendola. So it wasn't, it wasn't a bad week. Uh, it wasn't a great one, but so far we're still kind of hanging in there. Always going to deal with the surprises, but look, we're going to be wrong, but let's be wrong less often than everyone else. That's the goal. Yep, and let's be wrong for the right reasons, too. As we uh, go ahead and get started, the first game up, we'll do Carolina and Atlanta, one of the more entertaining games of the day. Falcons win it 30-28, to so let's start with them. Matt Ryan continues to play great, 369 yards, three more touchdowns on the day. Two of them going to Roddy White, who caught eight for 169, also had one to Michael Turner. But looking at the first four weeks, John, of the season so far, you've got Roddy White catching 27 balls. Tony Gonzalez has 26 Julio Jones, just 16 catches through four games, only had one today. Yeah, I, I wish I kind of stuck to my guns on this one because before he started just going nuts in the preseason, I was on the radio and saying that Roddy White was Matt Ryan's blankie and he was going to be still fine. But Roddy himself kept talking up Julio, and he just looked so unbelievably good in the preseason. There's something, there's something missing there with Julio. I can't really put my finger on it yet. He's he's not he's not there yet. I think that's the bottom line. So maybe he's unable to look. A stud receiver has to bring it every week. Julio Jones is clearly not there right now. But if you have him, you just you got to suck it up and keep starting him. And if you don't have him, you may want to look at him as a as a buy low guy here because he is extremely talented. And there, there will be better days, but there's no question. It's a disconcerting start for him. But otherwise, everything's good. I actually like Turner today. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't think we ranked him really high. I mean, I'm not going to go that high on him, but we, we spun him very positively. So uh, he comes through, and Matt Ryan continues to put up real healthy numbers. Carolina's side of the ball, Cam Newton, only completed 15 passes for 215 yards, but he did get you two passing touchdowns, had a great day on the ground as well, 86 yards rushing, got you a rushing score uh, on the day as well. Steve Smith, three for 52, but no touchdowns so far on the year for him, John. Yeah, it's a little bit of a concern because there, there's no doubt that Cam Newton is not playing as well as he did this year. And, and last year, this time, he was just locking on Smith big time. I don't know if Smith's getting certain coverages that are slowing him down, but no one else is truly stepping up here. Greg Olson has been productive. I guess someone, if someone is, it's Greg Olson. But you've you got to be a little concerned here. For the most part, you kind of ride it out. Maybe you have a better option. You stick him on your bench for now and, and wait till he works this thing through. And while Cam Newton's not out of the woods just yet, we had him splash on the homepage as a guy to trade for last week on the cheap. Why? Because he runs. It, it's very obvious. It's very simple. It, not a lot of brain surgery involved here. So uh, if you have Newton, you feel a lot better. Granted, it's, it's going to be a little rocky here. He's not perfect. But, again, he continues to run uh, nine more attempts, 86 yards the touchdown. He's got three rushing touchdowns in four games. That's not bad at all, and he does throw for 215 with two touchdowns. And this is all without really meaningful contributions from Steve Smith. So uh, there is some upside here, but for the at least these guys are kind of holding steady. D'Angelo Williams scored a touchdown today, but good luck trying to handicap when that's going to happen from week to week. He gets 11 carries, 49 yards, and uh, Jonathan Stewart back today. He carried 10 times. For 40 yards. And let's go ahead and move on to New England start, and Buffalo. Start Will, by the way, start Williams. If you're ever going to start him, start him when Stewart plays. Because when, yes. when Stewart's out, he does nothing. You're like, okay, he's the guy. Well, apparently when he's the guy, that's bad. So, I don't know. It is what it is. It's crazy. <laughs> Just, they're flex starters 
at best, bi week fill ins. You accept what they give you and you just move on. Patriots and Bills combined for 80 points today uh, up in Buffalo. And uh, let's go ahead and begin with the Patriots and Tom Brady. Got off to a little bit of a slow start here, but 340 yards, three passing touchdowns, even ran one in on the day. So just a huge fantasy day for Tom Brady. And Wes Welker, the story continues to unfold with him, where the first two games, everybody was talking about him getting phased out of the offense, and that seemed to be playing out on the field. Eight catches for 109 in the first two games. Last two games, John, 17 for 271. Yeah, but Julian Edelman was out, and Aaron Hernandez has been out. So... Mm -hmm. I, I think I think we're on the right track after week two, and I think what we said when these injuries came around is that it was a little bit of a stay of execution for Wes Welker owners. So if we can fast forward two more weeks, and Aaron Hernandez, by the way, is improving very quickly, a little quicker than expected, I think if we can fast forward two, three weeks, Paul, we could be looking at a scenario where you start Wes Welker and it's in the third quarter of a game in uh, mid to late October – and the dude's got two grabs for 19 yards in the third quarter, and like, what the hell's going on here? So uh, I think, again, I think it's a little bit of a stay of execution for now. I'm not convinced that once Hernandez and Edelman are back that Welkers won't pull back. They won't pull back a little bit from Wes Welker. Maybe a good sell-high candidate right now? I, I can't see. It's a tough call. If yeah. you have the depth. Look, I'm in, I got him in a league, the, the league you and I are in, Paul. It's a 14-team PPR expert league. I, I, I'm not doing anything. I'm just going to light a candle and hope for the best. Yeah. But if, you, if, you, if you're if you pretty loaded here, and you, especially in a non-PPR, you might as well just try and sell him if you can because it, he could be having some sort of peak in value right now. I know you thought this might turn into a nice uh, Ridley game, and it certainly uh, was one. 22 carries for 106 and two scores. But people talking about Brandon Bolden, who has scored now two weeks in a row. He runs 16 times for 137. Yeah, I don't know if it was a function of, look, the, the build defense just got worn down, but Bolden looked pretty damn good here. It's kind of similar to Ridley, just powerful guys. So this is a little bit of a problem here because not only is Bolden in the mix on top of the goal, I don't know about Ridley's margin for error, and if they are behind, I think Danny Woodhead is their hurry-up back. And, oh, by the way, Shane Vereen actually got a carry today. I don't think he's a factor, but he did get two targets as well. So it's a tough call because I don't think Ridley's done anything to lose his job. I mean, the guy averaged 4.8 yards. I mean, it's crazy. Here we are talking down about a player who had 22 carries for 106 <laughs> yards and, a, and, a, and two touchdowns, yeah. and we're worried. But it's it's <laughs> normally we'd be – having a parade for this guy but it is bill belichick so you, you got to worry about it so in, in a deep league where there's nothing on the waiver why i pick up brandon bolden they clearly like him and i think uh he has shown why buffalo bills scored 28 points in the game they had a lead early on in this one had the lead at the half in fact and uh Boy, it fell apart quickly in the second half, though. But offensively, the numbers were there for Ryan Fitzpatrick, 350 yards, four more passing touchdowns to go along with four interceptions on the day. But looking at his numbers over the first month, John, 12 touchdowns in the first four games. Yeah, I know. It's crazy. I was, I was this summer saying, talking 30 touchdowns for Fitzpatrick. It's amazing. He's on a pace for it. But the interceptions are a problem. I wrote this morning that if you get taxed for him, to beware of Fitzpatrick. But I did expect to have a nice game here. I'll say this, too. If you have them and you don't necessarily need them, get out there and sell. I, I think you can sell this guy uh, at sell high right now because what, we, what did we see last year? Another injury or two comes this year, and, and like it did last year, like, for example, if he loses Stevie Johnson, forget it. If they lose anyone else, it's going to make it tough. I, I just I don't see this continuing, quite frankly. Uh, I think that it's kind of looking like it could unravel, mainly due to injuries and the like. And Fitzpatrick's still shaky. So, I mean, he could be a good buy, a sell high guy right now. Otherwise, if you need him, just, just keep rolling with it because he is getting it done. Stevie Johnson quiet today, just two catches, 23 yards. Scott Chandler, four for 62, two more touchdowns. Uh, he's got four now on the year. But the running backs heading into this one, John, a bit of a question mark. Spiller, Jackson, neither guy completely healthy. Of course, they were both active in this game, and they split up the work. 16 touches for Jackson, 79 yards, 10 touches for Spiller, 38 yards. Yeah, I, 
I tried to preach some caution this morning about just just be careful with Fred Jackson. With Spiller, I didn't think Spiller really had any value, although he got some goal line carries. Why why do you rush a guy back from a shoulder injury and give him goal line carries when you got Fred Jackson? I'll never know. But and, and choice, but I think he got dinged up again in the game, so we'll have to see about that. But it, it's a mess. It's a mess right now with Fred Jackson and Spiller in the mix. At least choice wasn't a, that big of a factor. But we'll just have to see and monitor the practicing all week here to, to get a feel for how how prepared and able these guys are to, to handle a pretty large workload. But it, it's pretty clear that Spiller's going to have a little bit larger of a role than he did, say, week one when it was yeah. kind of Fred Jackson. So it, it's it's a bit of a mess here, Paul. Vikings go into Detroit and beat the Lions 20-13, to and – You've got to have some concern now about this Lions offense. Matt Stafford throws it 51 times for 319, but no scores on the day. He's got just three touchdown passes in four games, and only one of those has gone to Calvin Johnson, who had just five for 54 today. Yeah, they don't have their swagger right now. They don't have their mojo. Stafford's been off sailing some passes. I mean, he hasn't been horrible, and there have been some drops, a couple near misses, too. Had Burleson just missed a touchdown. Uh, I believe Titus Young almost scored in the game. So he, it was a little bit of a what it could have, should have for Stafford. But there's no question that he's not playing as well as last year and that the the offense is you, – you sense it's kind of teetering on the verge of implosion. Oh, uh, Brandon Pettigrew dropped a short touchdown. Calvin dropped a short touchdown. So I guess for fantasy he should have come through. He does throw for 319 with no picks and a rushing touchdown. Really should have had at least one more touchdown. So you're not panicking, but it, it's it's shaky here. There's no question. And Kevin Smith, I mean, you can start the guy who directed, you know, mall rats and chasing Amy uh, over the other guy because <laughs> uh, Kevin Smith is dead. But Joyke Bell is clearly, Paul, the third down back. They like this guy. So in a deep PPR league, I'd pick him up because it doesn't look like they can count on their running attack. Now, you've got to give some credit to the Viking defense because they're playing really well right now. But LaShore had a, a rough game, let's be honest. And yeah. Joyke Bell, eight targets, six for 72. Moving over to the Vikings, Christian Ponder, 16 for 26. Only 111 yards, no scores on the day. But I think the key stat for him, John, no INTs. He hasn't thrown one yet this year. Yeah, but we also t learned that people were going a little crazy on Ponder. I mean, I, I was involved in it, but I was taking calls from people. I actually got a couple Aaron Rodgers or Christian Ponder calls. I got wow. many Cam – no, many, Paul, Cam Newton or Christian Ponder calls wow. on the radio this week. I was like, no, don't do it. And, look, we had him ranked at, like, 16. I, that's about as high as you're going to go in a Christian Potter. He's still a young quarterback with a somewhat limited receiving core. And it looks like they're going to be more about defense and running the football than anything else. We know he had Simpson back, and he did get four for 50, which is nice, not bad. But I was like, look, let's, let's give it a week here, kind of see what we see. Uh, so you've got to worry about something like this happening where the defense dominates. They run Peterson a ton, 21 carries and he only throws it 26 times. It's kind of like kind of like Alex Smith. You know, certainly he's playing well. You feel right. good about him. But for fantasy, boy, you just never know. Jerome Simpson, first game of the year, four catches, 50 yards. First week that Percy Harvin didn't really come through for fantasy. Even in a PPR, didn't do a whole lot today. But uh, moving forward, let's go ahead and get going on Houston and Tennessee. The Texans blew out the Titans 38 14. Let's go ahead and start with Houston's side of the ball and uh, Matty Schaub, 202. A couple of touchdowns this week, and uh, one of them to Owen Daniels, who's now scored touchdowns in the last two games, John. Yeah, we liked him today. Uh, I definitely liked Owen Daniels today based on the matchup and the fact that he's clearly the number two option in the passing attack. So hopefully people started him. Schaub, again, great matchup, but he only attempts 28 passes because they play great defense. They ran it 31 times. Luckily, he had a solid day because we had him pretty high. Uh, but you got to be careful about this with Schaub. You just you just never know. And same with Andre Johnson. Little hit or miss. We I think we were talking about it last week. Little too reliant Andre Johnson is on the big plays. You certainly can't count on that every week. And what 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 a disappointment with Ben Tate. I swear yeah. the, these blowout backups. If, if someone were to tell you that the Houston Texans 
were going to beat the living crap out of Tennessee, 38-14, to and that 14-7 was a garbage-time touchdown late, you'd figure, oh, man, Ben Tate's got to do something off the bench. What the hell's going on out here, Paul? Yeah, I would, I would have penciled him in for 70 yards and a touch, but, uh, boy, he did nothing today. Amazing. Tough, well, it tough is to, what it is. You, you know, if you started him, you know, you look back at your decision and, and, and try and figure it out. If you started him over, let's see, I'm trying to come up with a good example. You know, if you started him over even a said Benson, or yeah, if you started him – Right, right. That's a bit much. Uh, we'll, we'll get to that. But but if you started him over, say Sean Green, who is had a bad matchup and isn't really doing anything, someone like that, you made the right call. But if you started him over a guy that that clearly has a pretty large role, like a like a, even a Stephen Ridley or someone like that, then then it's time to understand. Well, okay, I made a mistake there. But I don't think it's a mistake going into the matchup thinking that Tate could certainly do something. Tennessee Titans, Jake Locker threw two passes, then got hurt, missed the rest of the game. Separated shoulder is what we're hearing right now. So, of course, Matt Hasselbeck finished the game. If Locker's going to miss any time, what does that mean for this offense? You know, I kind of think it's good news, uh, believe it or not. I, I love Locker's skill set and the upside and all that, but we know he's a work in progress. We know it's going to be up and down. I think with a guy like Hasselbeck, it can stabilize things a little bit. Much better pocket presence, much takes care of the football. But although Locker actually hasn't thrown a lot of interceptions, but uh, I think it's probably good news. If Britt's back, let's just say Locker's out for three or four weeks, I think you pick up Hasselbeck. Why? It's, they're loaded. They're still loaded. If yeah. Britt is back, Hasselbeck has got a really nice working relationship with Britt. He worked with Kendall Wright a lot in the preseason. Nate Washington's fine. It's good news for Jared Cook. Those guys right there, they're they're loaded at receiver. So I think pick them up on the waiver wire if it looks like uh, lockers out. Of course, all we know now is that they, quote, fear the worst, whatever that means, because we've seen guys with separated shoulders miss a lot of time, and we've seen them play the next week. Yeah. Chris Johnson, 25 carries for 141 against this uh, Houston Texans defense. It, you just couldn't see this coming, John. I mean, based on how C.J. has looked the first three weeks, a lot of people gave up on him. He was riding the pine for a lot of us this week, and he comes through with 141. Get out there and sell, yep. I think, <laughs> if you've got Chris Johnson. Totally nonsensical. How the hell does Chris Johnson average 5.6 a pop against you? i got to watch his game because from what I saw early, he had a couple decent runs where he got yardage, but he wasn't really doing much. This, to me, looks like a function of garbage time production. Quite frankly, on the ground, we yeah. don't typically see it on the ground, but it's got anomaly and aberration written all over it. I don't think for a second that Chris Johnson's over any hurdle, and I think that in a week or two, maybe even this Sunday, if, they're, if they play, I don't even know that what the schedule is, we, we could be right back to square one where it's the third quarter and he's got nine carries for 11 yards. So if you can sell him now after this performance, absolutely get out there and sell. Another running back that had us scratching our heads today, Ryan Matthews. Now the Chargers go into Kansas City and win 37 to 20. Jackie Battle was the guy early on, and uh, you know Matthews by the end of the game ended up with a respectable stat line. But clearly, Jackie Battle was the guy for most of this game for the Chargers. Yeah, I mean we covered it. Certainly not like this. No one really expected this, but we wrote. I wrote on in the waiver wire over the weekend. On Saturday morning, you always check that waiver wire for last-minute tidbits that it's clear that Jackie Battle is the number two, going to get opportunities. If Matthews fumbles, he's standing by. He could be the guy they use to kind of ice games and all that. And uh, I wrote that uh, this morning that, look, uh, probably going to have to start Matthews because it's such a great matchup, but, but Battle's there. Battle is standing by. Be Beware of it. But I don't think anybody could have seen him being the guy uh, it smells to me, Paul, like it's they're sending a clear message to Matthew saying, look, we won't play you if you're going to hurt the team. So maybe uh, that will make an impression, and the kid will maybe do, be a little bit more judicious with that football and all that. And there is a report that, look, they, they're not bailing on him as their starter, Paul, but, boy, what a pain in the rear. I was told this summer – that I had bailed on Matthews more than anyone else in the in the fantasy business. And I, I didn't know if that was true or not, but I had him. Our cheat sheets, I think we're, he was in the 40s overall. Uh, I just, just, the guy's bad news. 
the, the, that first carry of the preseason with that serious injury, I was like, that's it. I, this yeah. is surreal. Uh, so it's amazing. Right now, it's, it's, uh, I, I don't even know, Paul, if he's a buy low guy. That's how bad it is. Wow. Wow. Phil Rivers tosses two touchdowns on the day, one to Jackie Battle, the other to Eddie Royal, who nobody's using for fantasy. Gates, Floyd, neither of those guys came through for you today if you needed them. Let's Jamie, move Gates looked good, though. Yeah, Gates, he did. Gates had, yeah, he had a nice 33-yard catch. He had 59 yards. Problem is, Rivers threw it 23 times. Yeah. Uh, Gates would have done well. But, again, lack of opportunities here against the hapless Chiefs. Kansas City Chiefs, boy, huge game last week for Jamal Charles. Fumbled a couple of times early in this game, but by the end of it, he showed you why he's in your lineup every week. 20 touches, 115 yards, and two touchdowns, John. Yeah, he, he's unbelievable. He said that touchdown run a la Marcus Allen. Yeah, um, wow. Peyton Hillis out, so Sean Drawn got some touches. I know there were some people on our message boards baffled by the fact that we had Dwayne Bowe for the rest of the season last week, number three at wide receiver. Well, maybe not now. Twelve more targets, <laughs> seven, one oh eight and a touch. I mean, the guy is great. I mean, this guy is all over the place. Garbage time production, it all counts. Dwayne Bowe is gonna have a huge year if he stays healthy and castles upright and then he's gonna I mean, Paul, I'm talking I'm talking fourteen hundred yards and, and like fifteen touchdowns this year. Maybe wow. not fifteen, but I'm talking thirteen, fourteen hundred yards and ten, twelve touchdowns. Wow, wow. Big day for Dwayne Bow, seven for one oh eight and a touch as we move on. San Francisco and the New York Jets, and boy, the Jets offense is horrible right now. They didn't score in this game. Thirty four zip they lose at home. What can you say about this Jets offense? Now, Santonio Holmes went down uh, with an injury on the day, but 145 yards of total offense. I mean, there's nobody here to even consider starting on your fantasy team. Right, yeah, and Santonio was a foot issue. It was a non-contact foot injury. Um, a source told ProFootballTalk.com that there are no fractures, but another form of damage is expected. So uh, that doesn't sound good. And he was mm. the only guy to really consider here based on the volume and the targets. He did get eight more in this game, but it, it is just an abomination right now. You, you can't use anyone. And Dustin Keller's been out. It's just, I don't know what else to say, but uh, head for the hills. Otherwise, just forget it. You can't, you can't use any of these guys. I mean, Mark Sanchez has been putting up decent numbers, yeah, 103, 103 with no touchdowns. That's that's terrible. Oh, boy. For the 49ers, it was a big day on the ground. A lot of Frank Gore, a lot of Kendall Hunter. Colin Kaepernick played a lot, ran for 50 yards in a score. Alex Smith only threw it 21 times, just 143 yards and no scores through the air. So clearly none of the receivers were going to come through. Uh, you know, but this is how they like Have to, John. Yeah, you there, Paul? Yeah. Oh, okay. I thought I thought we lost you. Okay. Yeah, it's a it's a it's a it's a shame. I I think there's potential here, but you, as you mentioned, I don't know if Alex Smith. I, I think I don't know if he's playing particularly well the last two weeks for one. And they just, as you mentioned, the, the defense really stepped up. Obviously, it was. I think more so in this game, it was like, okay, we we don't need they didn't need to do anything flashy or out, out, yeah. outlandish. And uh, I did actually reach Manningham this morning on a late vibe and a late gut feeling, and he did almost score. Did you see that play? Yep. Uh, down the field there on the right side. Uh, but you can't really trust anyone here. We lost a little trust with Crabtree. Vernon Davis are probably sucking it up every week and starting him. But Crabtree is a tough call. It's, he's a good player. He's clearly the number one wide receiver. But you just can't have days like this. Seven targets, only two for 215. So we've got to pull back from him. If it's a good matchup, maybe we'll rank him at like 25, 26. But most of the time, he's going to probably be in that early 30 range simply because, you know, we got to prepare and consider games like this right here because this is, this is not a shock, and that's the bad news. It's not a shock when we see a game like this. Seattle at St. Louis. This game was ugly for fantasy. 19 to 13, the Rams win at home, and uh, of course they get the uh, the touchdown on the fake field goal, John. But uh, at least it went to Danny Amendola, a guy who people are using for fantasy. He ends up with six catches, 55 yards on the day. He's got 31 receptions through the first month of the season. He's really the one guy that I guess you can count on in this offense right now. 
Absolutely, yeah. Certainly we didn't like him this week with with a bad matchup, uh, and he got lucky with the touchdown or else he, he doesn't have really a, a good day. But yeah. certainly you could do a lot worse, no question. I was actually shocked that Steven Jackson looked okay. Had a touchdown run called back, too. I, I Who knew? I mean, the guy's like looking like Fred G. Sanford out there last week. Misses all practice, basically. Very limited on Friday. Granted, he didn't have a, a big day by any stretch, but I, I would have thought that he would have looked terrible, and he actually looked pretty decent here. So he's obviously still the guy. They'll still work in Daryl Richardson, but clearly you can't use Richardson unless Jackson's out. I still think he's a good stash and hope guy. Uh, otherwise, a receiver, they got Austin Pettis out there uh, for a couple of some snaps to see what he can give them. And they did take a couple of shots to Brian, uh, not Brian Quick, to Chris Givens, and they did hit yes. on a 52-yarder. Uh, I, I don't say pick him up in a deep league, deep. <clears throat> it, it may be worth a shot because I'm sure – they want these rookies to start by season's end uh, or at least see a lot more snaps. For now, the only guy is, I, I, I hate to recommend him, but they do go to Brandon Gibson. Only four targets in this game, but he is basically the number two receiver, number two option in the passing attack. And once again, Mr. 22 yards, Lance Kendricks comes through if you need your 22. <laughs> For the Seahawks, boy, nobody runs harder than Marshawn Lynch. He is a lot of fun to watch. 118 yards and a score on the ground. Caught four passes for 37, so a little more involved in the passing game than he normally is, but uh, he is off to a great start this year, 423 yards through the first four games of the season. Quarterback play, John, continues to be an issue here. Russell Wilson, 160 yards passing, no scores, three turnovers on the day, and of course, uh, Golden Tate, the Monday night hero, only comes through with one grab for seven yards. Yeah, Golden Tate is the epitome of the player like, you give him no chance, and then he scores. And then you're like, okay, let me get behind this guy a little bit, and then he kills you. I mean, this Golden Tate is the poster child of that. But I, as I said last week, I, again, Russell Wilson's a great story, all that, blah, blah, blah. The guy is very short. He's still in over his head. They are hiding him. I think they're being stubborn here, trying to look like geniuses and not playing Matty Flint. What do I know? But... I think the numbers bear that out. Look at look at Russell Wilson's day. Only 25 attempts, 163 picks. Granted, they got lucky last week, uh, and, and they had certainly a, a, a favorable matchup this week. So you know they're they're winning, but boy, are they going to beat a good team, Paul, in the postseason with Russell Wilson? I say, say no. no, no way. All right, let's go ahead and move on to uh, the Cards and the Dolphins. This game. Very exciting. Went to overtime. 24-21 Cardinals win at home. They remain unbeaten. But let's start with the Dolphins because in what was a very tough matchup for Brian Hartline, figured he'd see a lot of Patrick Peterson in this game. 12 receptions for 253 and a touchdown. It is time to turn on your Hartline, John. Oh, it is. Let it shine wherever you go. Let it make a happy glow for all the world to see, Paul. Uh, yeah. I mean, we've been giving this guy a lot of love, but I – what are you going to do? It's, yeah. it's Brian Harline against against a good defense and Patrick Peterson. I just I just couldn't get behind the guy. Geez, 19 targets helps, uh, and he he's wide open for that 80 yard touch. I mean, no one around him is <laughs> a joke. <laughs> so and obviously that padded the numbers a little bit. But geez, let's give credit where credit is due. I think here on the podcast or maybe on the radio, he's kind of like Brandon Lloyd. He just gets open on the outside, double moves and the like. He's slick and savvy, and again, as we've said here on this podcast, it's a great sign when you see a guy like this really clicking with a young quarterback, because now you're like, okay, this is we got something here. So I think at this point, and, and ironically, I liked Bess this week, basically simply because I thought it'd be Pat Peterson on Heartline for the most part, which I think it was, not all the time, and, and Bess comes through. So Bess is another guy here. Seven for 123. You got two good games in a row. So now, now you got confidence in Devon Best. You can pick him up in a PPR. Perfect bye week replacement type of guy. But Paul, I think with Brian Hartline, unless you're loaded, unless you're just an embarrassment of riches, geez, I don't, I don't know how you sit him because again, number one target, clearly getting it done, getting open, and Tannehill's been pretty solid. Yeah, and that's two big games now in the last 
three weeks. Remember, two weeks ago he caught nine balls for 111, and of course the huge game today. Reggie Bush heading into this one, dealing with the knee issue from a week ago. He was active. He did start, carried 17 times, just 67 yards though. Yeah, he did have one nice run, uh, but that was you know it was a tough call because it was it was a tough matchup because of Arizona they were without Darnell Dockett, but that's a that's a good defense here. So we'll have to watch if Bush is limited. All week next week, maybe you don't start him, but for the most part, you probably are just going to suck it up and roll with him, you know, and you know, accept what he gives you because he's been he's been too good this year already. Uh, yeah. he, he's legit. He is running that twenty-one yarder was a nice one today. He, he is absolutely legit, and that offensive line blocks pretty well for the run. The Cardinals extremely unbalanced on offense today. Kevin Cobb throws forty-eight passes, three hundred twenty-four yards, and three scores. Or a terrific day for fantasy, but. Let's focus on Ryan Williams, who, with Beanie Wells on IR now, he's going to be the guy, carried 13 times for just 26 yards on the day, uh, also caught one ball for zero yards, so kind of a lackluster first showing as the guy for Ryan Williams today. I, I tried to temper expectations. I mean, I, 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 I tried to say, look, we, we don't really like him here that and, much. because And this is a good defense. The Dolphins' defense is tough. Oh, yeah, and that's exactly why, because of, because of the matchup was not very good at all. So while it's disconcerting because they just can't seemingly have – can we have a running game for four quarters? Apparently not. I, I don't think they can. But when there's a lesser opponent, almost no matter who it is, actually – uh, if they have a nice lead, thanks to the good defense, like we saw last week in week three with the Eagles, they'll give him the rock and, and maybe he pops off a run here. But, yeah, you know, it's a week-to-week thing. He's still working his way into shape here. They, their running game is, is basically non-existent, so you can't expect the world. But there will be better days for Ryan Williams. This was a tough matchup. Always nice to see Larry Fitzgerald get in the end zone as he did today. How about Andre Roberts, who's now scored touchdowns in three of his four games? Yeah, he has, but this this was the clearly the biggest game. game. I, I mentioned him as a reach this morning. I, I don't have a lot of confidence in him, quite frankly, because, for one, I don't have a ton of confidence in Cobb. But I, I think, as I said this morning, it's obviously very easy, much easier to throw on Miami than the pass, so I thought Cobb would actually have a, have a decent day. The one guy that was concerning me a little bit was Michael Floyd, because he's, he's coming on a little bit here. Eight targets today, four for 35. But Andre Roberts is still... For now, the number two option in the passing attack. I started him actually in a couple of leagues, deeper 14-team PPR leagues. You could do worse than Andre Roberts because Cobb, he's still making some bonehead decisions and throws. But for the most part, he is playing pretty well. Denver destroyed Oakland in Denver today. 37-6 to is your final. And this game pretty much unfolded exactly the way you thought it would, John. Peyton Manning. Had an easy go of it against that depleted Raiders secondary. He completes 30 of 38 for 338 and three scores. And uh, all the key guys coming through today for the Broncos. It was a big day for McGahee. I know you thought it would be a nice spot for him. He certainly had his opportunities. Uh, Demarius Thomas played well. Eric Decker scored today. Just an offensive bonanza for the Broncos. Yeah, start your players against the Raiders. I mean, that, that is for sure. Decker almost had a second touchdown, really came close. He caught the ball, and he had another foot out. I think it was a hair late from Manning, or else he would have had eight grabs for about 90 with two touchdowns. Again, we're, we're not dancing in the streets here, but thankfully, I know a lot of our readers drafted Decker. Thankfully, at least, at least now they're seeing, okay, these guys aren't crazy. He, he, he's had two really nice games in a row here. Uh, the first two weeks were Manning's first two games. After a long, long layoff, so hopefully the matchups, as I said last two weeks ago, are a lot better. Again, we're not expecting a huge monster year from Decker at this point, and and Thomas is fine, and obviously he's going to get his. But Decker, just just give us just give us five, six catches a week on average, seventy yards, score every other week, something like that. Not bad, and I think we're right on track for that. Maybe a little bit more than that, Paul. Yeah, both Thomas and Decker on pace for over 1,000 yards this season if they keep it up. Let's move it over to the Raiders, and Carson Palmer throws for only 202. No scores on the day, but Darren McFadden is the guy that clearly people are asking questions about right now, John, because 13 carries, 34 yards. I mean, this is a bit of a tough spot for him, but, uh, you know, he, he hasn't been able to overcome these tough matchups. Yeah, i, I got to watch this because I, I have not seen it. 
Uh, I saw bits and pieces of it. It's I'm baffled a little bit here because Denver's D, they're not that great this year. A little bit better for the run, maybe. Uh, we were a little encouraged last week when he popped off that long run. We we don't want to call the the guy a one trick pony for God's sakes, jeez. But but the real disconcerting thing is after that week one bonanza, and one of the main reasons that we really got behind him was because we knew the new offense. Were, they were going to flex him from the formation. They were going to you know, utilize him. I think really, Paul. I think what this is is a function of their receiving core. I, I don't. I, I know it's a transition to the zone blocking scheme and all that. I think Paul, it's a function of their shredded receiving core right now. A lot of injuries. Obviously, Jacoby Ford's out for the year. Denarius Moore was slow off the mark. Darius Saywood Bay is out of the mix. So it's a mess. I just think if they can get, let's say, Haywood Bay back, Moore look good. I think Moore's flashing out there. He almost scored. Uh, I'm feeling yep. pretty good about Daenerys Moore right now. Uh, just just let's get it going a little bit with some semblance of a passing attack. Haywood Bay, Moore, and anybody else, I think that's when we'll start seeing a more complete and balanced offense. I, I think it's disconcerting for sure, but I, I, if we're looking for a reason why, I think that's it. Uh, but back to the other point I was going to make, what the hell is up with McFadden's role in the passing attack here? I don't. After that week one bonanza, that was one of the main reasons we really liked him, yep. because obviously Michael Bush is gone, so that helps. And th- we knew they were going to utilize him in the passing attack week one, and we're like, wow, look at that. And then it's been nothing ever since. Very strange. Cincinnati at Jacksonville. Bengals win 27 to 10. Give the Bengals defense a lot of credit. Only three active cornerbacks in the game for the Bengals today, but Blaine Gabbert still only able to manage 186 yards passing. One score to Mercedes Lewis. He's got a couple on the year. Uh, and a tough game for MJD today, John. Just 13 carries, 38 yards, but uh, nice to see him make up for it in a PPR. Five catches, 42 yards. Yeah, Adam Kaplan was their nickel corner for the Bengals. Uh, he didn't suit up, luckily, but uh, he, was, he was standing by. Yeah, they were really thin here, and luckily they were facing off against Blaine Gabbert. At least we got something from Justin Blackman. I don't know if it's a great sign yeah. uh, against a depleted secondary, but he was targeted 10 times, six grabs for 48. MJD, as you mentioned, they just couldn't get the running game going. It was, it was one of those games, like, you, you feel like this should happen a lot because of the – crappy receiving core and quarterback play, but yeah. it doesn't. It doesn't really happen that much. But today was one of those days where, okay, it just was not happening for the rushing attack. So at least he did make up for it a little bit in the passing game, as you mentioned. Let's move it over to the Bengals, and Andy Dalton throws for 244, two passing touchdowns, runs one in as well. He now has three touchdowns three games in a row. Now, we thought this would be a good spot for Ben Jarvis Green Ellis. He did get his opportunities, 26 carries, 82 yards, fumbled right on top of the goal. That's two fumbles of the last two mm. weeks. He already hadn't fumbled like ever before that. All of yeah. a sudden, he's got fumbleitis. But uh, they went back to him. He got his opportunities, 82 yards on the ground, caught a couple of balls as well. Uh, you know, with as well as Dalton's been playing, certainly A.J. Green is going to keep on getting his. 117 yards and a touchdown. I know Gresham had a near miss in the end zone. So all the key guys you look for to do well pretty much came through today. Absolutely. Boy, A.J. Green, I I know we had him and Julio neck and neck. I I can't remember who was higher, if they were close or tied. Obviously, we we pumped up both as major, major talents and major picks. It was a tough call because on one hand, you've got A.J. Green, clearly the go-to guy, but a little bit more attention. Do we trust Andy Dalton? Whereas with Julio, you're like, okay, you're playing alongside Roddy. That helps. You got Matt Ryan. So it was a tough call. Right now, AJ is winning by far. This guy is awesome. And just missed another touchdown as well. He's always in the mix. He is a stud. I mean, he is, he is what the unrealistic fantasy player, you know, he, he appeases the unrealistic fantasy player who expects his guy to go off every week. Well, AJ Green is kind of doing that. Uh, Gresham almost scored again. I think it's okay. You know, the vibes are okay with him. Five grabs for 47. Just a little disappointed in Hawkins. And Green Ellis, as you mentioned. Boy, I, I, boy the matchup was so good on paper. And, but I was like, ah, I was just cautious with him. Because if he doesn't score, uh, he's going to get you 8.8 points in a non-PPR. Right. You know? right. And uh, Andy Dalton now. 
three touchdowns in each of the last three games. Are you comfortable using him as a QB1, or is he more of a high-end backup right now? Well, we're a quarter of the way through the season. I, I think it's a little bit of a mirror job, but let's let's give Dalton credit. He's clearly a professional quarterback. Uh, he's, he's outdoing my expectations, that's for sure. Second year of the offense, and these other players are stepping up. He does have a beast and a stud in A.J. Green. Uh, yeah, I, I think that you, you can use him right now. I think when I look at the rankings for the season, I think he's got to be in the top 14 for sure. So that means he's a starter, at least in a, a 14-team league. Two-quarterback league, obviously, he's a slam dunk. Green Bay at home holds off the Saints 28-27. The Saints have yet to win a football game this year, John. We'll start with the Packers offense. and Aaron Rodgers busts out today 319 yards. Four touchdowns on the day. He had more touchdowns today than in the first three games combined. But let's look at who scored those touchdowns. Uh, James Jones had two of them. He's obviously very hit and miss. It's hard to know what to do with him from week to week. Although, Greg Jennings got hurt again in this game. I guess that's a good thing for Jones moving forward. Absolutely is, yeah. We had Greg Jennings as a guy to trade after week one. It, it pained me to do it but because uh, I love Greg Jennings. But let's be honest here. It's been... It's been a weird year for him. It's a contract year for him, too. He's had a lot of injury problems now, now with a groin. So uh, it's problematic. And good news for for uh, James Jones, no no question about it. Came up with a couple of touchdowns. Good to see Cobb get back in the mo mix here. Eight uh, targets, seven for 66. Uh, I thought we'd, we'd have – well, he came through. I'm, I guess we can't say Jordy Nelson disappointed with eight catches for 93 and a touch. But it was, it was like pulling teeth out there for a little while with Jordy Nelson. I don't know if they're back uh, because the offense is still a little out of sync here, but we knew the matchup was beautiful, and thankfully this one really totally held true to form, and pretty much everything we expected to happen did happen. Yeah, and also keep in mind, this is a horrific Saints defense right now. They haven't been able to stop anybody. Uh, so we'll see if the Pack can keep it going next week. We'll move it over to the Saints offense. Drew Brees throws 54 passes for 446 yards, Three touchdowns on the day. He's averaging 330 yards per game so far through the first four games. But good to see Marcus Colston finally bust out. Of course, he wasn't completely healthy the first three games. Looked healthy today, John. Nine catches for 153 and a touch. Yeah, I was talking to Mr. Kaplan about that, I think, off the air. It's like Colston's a guy who has worked through injury problems in season, like last year. He had that knee problem. He has he has been able to work through injury problems in season. I actually talked to him about it when he was in earlier in his career. He, it was a learning process of how to play hurt. Uh, there's a difference between playing hurt and injured. If you're injured, then you know you you can't play. But if you're hurt, but you may be able to play. And, and it was a little bit of a learning curve for him. So yeah, you're right. You look great. So you're back in business with him. Uh, rolling them with them every week because they don't have a ton of receiver here. Lance Moore, boy, it's been a little shaky here. 15 targets, but only seven catches. Now, seven catches is great, but he drops some passes now. So I'm a little concerned about that. Jimmy Graham, fine. Uh, had a touchdown batted away at the last minute, but they don't have much else left here. So if Breeze is going to throw it every week, or uh, throw it on almost every down every week, which looks like he is. Yeah. Now, somebody else has got to step up, but for now it's just Colston, Graham, and Moore. And once again, Mark Ingram, uh, we we got to start a free Mark Ingram campaign here and just get this guy really? out of here. <laughs> Darren Sproles, 10 touches on the day. He got a touchdown. Pierre Thomas, another guy, seems to touch the ball 10, 11 times every week. It's just a matter of what is he going to do with those touches. The answer today was only 13 yards, not very much. But uh, he does get his touches every week, John. Yeah, he he gets his touches. Uh, more so, uh, I, I trust him more than Ingram, I'll tell you that. I have absolutely no idea what to do with Mark Ingram. I think, you know, next week when I do the projections with Mark Ingram, I'm going to go over to dartboards.com and uh, use that to give me the projections because there's no rhyme or reason to how they use them. Oh, boy. Washington Redskins down in Tampa. This one came right down to the end. 24-22, Redskins win the game. And what can you say about Robert Griffin III? Continues to operate on a very high level here. 323 yards passing. No passing TDs, but, of course, he always gets it done with his legs. Ran it seven times, 43 yards rushing, ran a touchdown in. And, uh, you know, I saw you tweet earlier about Griffin. And, you know, this guy may run in 10 or 12 on the year. 
Oh yeah, I mean he had a, he got jobbed on a, on the run uh, that one quarterback draw. I think he crossed the plane. They didn't they didn't give it to him. No, it was the fumble where Pierre Garcon. I think he cro- may have crossed the plane before he fumbled, but he, he is shot out of a cannon. But took a nasty hit to the thigh area on that run. So, geez, I, I talk to Fran Tarkenton every week, and I, I I'm asking him every week, do you think RG three can make it through? And he's and Fran is this guy. I'm telling you, he's almost always right. He he believes he will. He just thinks he's got that certain quality, and that that Fran himself had just somehow finding a way to avoid injury uh, and, and playing unlike Michael Vick, basically the anti Michael Vick. But that said, he is taking some shots simply because he's out there running a lot. But when they get Pierre Garcon back up to speed, they're working in Hankerson. He's pretty active. Fred Davis showing some signs of life. The old line's been okay. Alfred Morris continues to look really nice, real solid. Uh, they're looking strong here. RJ three, it's it's amazing. He, he is a fantasy gold mine right now. I still think you should look to trade for Pierre Garcon because that's his guy. Alfred Morris runs for one thirteen and a touch. He hasn't run for less than seventy eight yards in a game yet, and he's scored touchdowns in three of his four games so far this year. Let's move it over to Tampa Bay, and uh, it was pretty ugly for a while on offense today, but, uh, you know, the Redskins really haven't been able to stop anybody on defense, and eventually the Bucks' passing game, at least, came through for fantasy. 299 yards and a touchdown to Vincent Jackson, who was very quiet a week ago, caught six for 100 in that touchdown today. Yeah, it was ugly early, as you mentioned. It looked like Jackson he had, like, one catch in the third quarter, and luckily they got they got hot late and and. Freeman got on a little bit of a roll, and I, I did like Jackson this week. Didn't really like Mike Williams. It, it's hard to even go there at this point because of the quarterback struggling so much, but he does have some chemistry with, with uh, Freeman. He's a bi-week fill-in at this point. Uh, one guy to keep an eye on, not really for to pick up, but maybe he can help, Tyquan Underwood. They, they need a little speed. And he's got some of that three targets, three grabs for 39 yards, but they're still really limited. And, you know, it's 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 time to get a little worried about the running attack here, obviously. I, I kind of wrote this week that LeGarrette Blunt, I put it on the waiver wire, I think I put it in the column this morning, that they, they're going to start working him in here a little bit just, just to give a different look. He's a, certainly a power runner like Martin. He's just, he's just a, a little bigger of a man, obviously. Uh, mm-hmm. So, you know, if that's going to hurt Martin – uh, if he's going to take away from Martin, that that does hurt because we know it's it's a it's a tough situation here. Their defenses are focusing in on him. The only reason we're really getting behind him is because he's obviously the featured guy. If they're going to pull back a little bit, that's a concern for Dougie Martin. New York Giants and the Eagles playing now. It is halftime. Sunday night football. Eagles seven, Giants three. The only touchdown of the game so far. A Michael Vick touchdown pass. To Deshaun Jackson, and uh, a little bit surprised, John. This is only a seven-three game right now. Mm, not really. I, I, I'm not that surprised. Um, Vic was a tough call. It looks like he's going to outdo our projection for him. I think mean, we had him only at like 15. I mean, uh, which way do you go with this guy? You just between his struggles. Uh, there, there were positives. Getting Macklin back's a positive. Uh, but then on the and being at home against a team that they've had success. Divisional opponent, those were all kind of positives. But then on the other hand, he is Michael Vick. He's struggling. The O-line's decimated, and the Giants could really wreak some havoc. So he's a tough call. But at the very least, here's what we learned tonight thus far. If he's got his full complement of weapons, you probably roll with him. If he's missing like one guy, forget it. Kind of head for the hills, especially Macklin. If he's missing Macklin as he was last week, you probably want to just abort the Mike Vick plan for the most part, unless unless he's clearly your best option. But, you know, certainly a decent sign thus far, 11-19, 132 as we record the podcast. Yeah, and uh, something else we've learned is that after the huge game last week, Barden had for the Giants. Knicks was out last week. Knicks out again tonight. But the difference is Dominic Hickson is back, and he technically was the starter for the Giants tonight. He's got four catches, 60 yards. Barden has nothing so far. Yeah, yeah, I think I tweeted that today, and I tweeted it when it when it came down. That uh, yeah, I think we all kind of went a little crazy crazy on Rams's Barden. Um, I I wasn't expecting much today, but we probably underestimated a little bit the Hickson news. But I did tweet before the game that I think it's worth noting for Barden 
that he did what he did last week without Hickson, and now Hickson's back. He's actually been pretty decent, Hickson has, when he's been out there this year. Keep in mind, this is a guy who was playing over Victor Cruz early last year in, in Dominic right. Hickson. So, uh, yeah, Barden, yeah, that was, a, that was a matchup thing. He got lucky last week, uh, but he's very slow and sluggish. All right, guys, that'll do it for week four of the FantasyGuru.com Sunday Night Wrap-Up Podcast. For John Hanson, I'm Paul Kelly. Good luck tonight, good luck tomorrow night, and we will talk to you next time. Blog Talk Radio, where millions of hosts and listeners gather. Really high. I mean, I'm not going to go that high on him, but we we spun him very positively. So uh, he comes through, and Matt Ryan continues to put up real healthy numbers. Carolina side of the ball, Cam Newton only completed 15 passes for 215 yards, but he did get you two passing touchdowns, had a great day on the ground as well, 86 yards rushing, got you a rushing score uh, on the day as well. Steve Smith, three for 52, but no touchdowns so far on the year for him, John. Yeah, it's a little bit of a concern because there, there's no doubt that Cam Newton is not playing as well as he did this year. And, and last year, this time, he was just locking on Smith big time. I don't know if Smith's getting certain coverages that are slowing him down, but no one else is truly stepping up here. Greg Olson has been productive. I guess someone, if someone is, it's Greg Olson. But you you got to be a little concerned here. For the most part, you kind of ride it out. Maybe you have a better option. You stick him on your bench for now and, and wait till he works this thing through. And while Cam Newton's not out of the woods just yet, we had him splashed on the homepage as a guy to trade for last week on the cheap. Why? Because he runs. It, it's very obvious. It's very simple. It, not a lot of brain surgery involved here. So uh, if you have Newton, you feel a lot better. Granted, it's it's – going to be a little rocky here he's not perfect but again he continues to run uh, nine more attempts 86 yards the touchdown he's got three rushing touchdowns in four games that's not mm-hmm. I, I i think i think we we're on the right track after week two and i think what we said when these injuries came around is that it was a little bit of a stay of execution for west welker owners so if we can fast forward two more weeks and aaron hernandez by the way is improving very quickly a little quicker than expected I think if we can fast forward two, three weeks, Paul, we could be looking at a scenario where you start Wes Welker and it's in the third quarter of a game in uh, mid to late October and a dude's got two grabs for 19 yards in the third quarter and like, what the hell's going on here? So uh, I think, again, I think it's a little bit of a stay of execution for now. I'm not convinced that once Hernandez and Edelman are back that Welkers won't pull back, they won't pull back a little bit from Wes Welker. Maybe a good sell high candidate right now? I I can't see it's a tough call if yeah. you have the depth. Look, I'm in. I got him in a league. The the league you and I are in, Paul. It's a 14 team PPR expert league. I, I I'm not doing anything. I'm just going to light a candle and hope for the best. Yeah. But if you if you if you're pretty loaded here, and you, especially in a non PPR, you might as well just try and sell him if you can because it, he could be having some sort of peak in value right now. I know you thought this might turn into a nice uh, Ridley game, and it certainly uh, was one. 22 carries for 106 and two scores. But people talking about Brandon Bolden, who has scored now two weeks in a row. He runs 16 times. Blog Talk Radio, the world's largest online radio network. Here we go, week number four of the FantasyGuru.com Sunday night wrap-up podcast. Paul Kelly and FantasyGuru.com publisher John Hanson here to break down all of the action so far, week number four in the National Football League. John, good to be with you on a Sunday night. And week four, as we like to do at the top of the podcast, give us your broad overview of the week. Um, probably not as good as the first three weeks, but I, I wouldn't say it was a bad week. Once again, as always, there are buzz kills and surprises. But I felt, I'm looking at the scores here, for the most part, a lot of people came through. Denver was a big one. We love Denver's offense this week, obviously. They came through. There were a couple of 
situations where we felt that a team would get completely shut out like the Jets did and mm. basically the Rams did if you take away that fake kick and touchdown to Danny Amendola. So it wasn't, it wasn't a bad week. Uh, it wasn't a great one, but so far we're still kind of hanging in there. Always going to deal with the surprises, but look, we're going to be wrong, but let's be wrong less often than everyone else. That's the goal. Yep, and let's be wrong for the right reasons, too. As we uh, go ahead and get started, the first game up, we'll do Carolina and Atlanta, one of the more entertaining games of the day. Not bad at all, and he does throw for 215 with two touchdowns. And this is all without really meaningful contributions from Steve Smith. So uh, there is some upside here, but for the at least these guys are kind of holding steady. D'Angelo Williams scored a touchdown today, but good luck trying to handicap when that's going to happen from week to week. He gets 11 carries, 49 yards, and uh, Jonathan Stewart back today. He carried 10 times for 40 yards. And let's go ahead and move on to New England start, and Buffalo. Start Will, by the way, start Williams. If you're ever going to start him, start him when Stewart plays. Because when, yes. when Stewart's out, he does nothing. You're like, okay, he's the guy. Well, apparently when he's the guy, that's bad. So I don't know. It is what it is. It's crazy. <laughs> Just, they're flex starters. At best, bye week fill ins, you accept what they give you, and you just move on. Patriots and Bills combined for 80 points today uh, up in Buffalo. And uh, let's go ahead and begin with the Patriots. And Tom Brady got off to a little bit of a slow start here, but 340 yards, three passing touchdowns, even ran one in on the day. So just a huge fantasy day for Tom Brady. And Wes Welker, the story continues to unfold with him, where the first two games, everybody was talking about him getting phased out of the offense, and that seemed to be playing out on the field. Eight catches for 109 in the first two games. Last two games, John, 17 for 271. Yeah, but Julian Edelman was out, and Aaron Hernandez has been out. So Falcons win it 30-28, to so let's start with them. Matt Ryan continues to play great, 369 yards, three more touchdowns on the day. Two of them going to Roddy White, who caught eight for 169, also had one to Michael Turner. But looking at the first four weeks, John, of the season so far, you've got Roddy White catching 27 balls. Tony Gonzalez has 26. Julio Jones, just 16 catches through four games, only had one today. Yeah, I, I wish I kind of stuck to my guns on this one because before he started just going nuts in the preseason, I was on the radio and saying that Roddy White was Matt Ryan's blankie and he was going to be still fine, but Roddy himself kept talking up Julio, and he just looks so unbelievably good in the preseason. There's something there's something missing there with Julio. I, I can't really put my finger on it yet. He's he's not He's not there yet. I think that's the bottom line. So maybe he's unable to look a stud receiver it has to bring it every week julio jones is clearly not there right now but if you have him you just you got to suck it up and keep starting him and if you don't have him you may want to look at him as a as a buy low guy here because he is extremely talented and there, there will be better days but there's no question it, it's a disconcerting start for him but otherwise everything's good i actually like turner today uh, mm -hmm. I don't think we ranked him 